Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This May 16, 2016, County Commissioner's meeting will now come to order. First item of business will be uh, our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. This time I'd like to call on Commissioner Glenn Adams. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, like to, oh, uh, I'd if I did that. Um, we've got, uh, and I'd ask, uh, we've got a couple of groups here tonight. We've got um, Willis Creek um, Communities United for Youth Development. Uh, if you will stand, I think we just took some pictures with them. Uh, they're a nonprofit group with members from uh, several churches throughout the Grays Creek community. And they provide uh, assistance to youth and everything from tutoring uh, to life lessons. They've been doing this for almost uh, 20 years. It includes about five churches, Willis Creek, Amy Zion Church, Swans Creek Missionary Baptist Church, Baptist Union Missionary Baptist Church, Grays Creek Missionary Baptist Church, Swans Creek Missionary Baptist Church, and Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. These young folk, every Monday while school is in session, beginning at about 6 p.m., Volunteers work with these students in uh, various er uh, areas regarding math, science, and uh, social studies. And so we'd like to thank them for coming here today and being a part uh, of this group. Tonight they had, uh, they meet tonight, which is a, one of the Monday nights, but to be supportive of uh, their church member, Ms. Ayanna Fort, who's going to do uh, the pledge for us, and their pastor, one of the pastors of uh, the Pastor of Willis Creek, Reverend Lindo, they gave, forgave that tonight to come here to be with us, and we want to thank you so very much. Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, um, uh, our invocation is going to be done by uh, Reverend Lindo, who is the pastor of uh, Willis Creek AME Zion Church, which is uh, located at the corner of Turner Road and NC 87 in Grays Creek Community. Uh, you know, uh, my good friend Judge Pone says that Grays Creek is God's country. And so uh, uh, he's been telling me that for all the years that we've known him. Uh, he served there for the past 10 years. Uh, he's a member of the Central North Carolina Annual Conference of the AME Zion Church and currently serves as an instructor for the local preachers in the district and conference level. As he's coming forth uh, to give us the pledge, it's going to be Miss Ayana Fort, who is also a member of uh, Willis Creek, and she can come on forward. She's a sixth grader at Grays Creek Middle School. Uh, she tried to take my chair tonight, said I could go <laughs> home. She was getting mighty comfortable in it. We're going to be right there by that microphone. Uh, she's a rising seventh grader at Grays Creek Middle School, where she excels by making the principal's list and participating in the AIG, Academically Intelligent and Gifted Program, Mr. Key. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. She also participates in her school chorus as well as all county chorus. And in her spare time, she enjoys drawing and playing the piano. Uh, she's active in the children's choir, mass choir, usher board, and volunteers wherever needed. Uh, she is the daughter of, where is she at? Miss Tabitha Fort McDuffie, if you stand, please. Uh, that's her mother there. And she's going to do the pledge for us. So if we would all stand now for the invocation by Reverend Lindo, followed by the pledge. Let us bow. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, it is once more that we come to say thank you. Thanking you, Lord, for the life, health, and strength that you have given unto us. Now, Lord, as we will now assemble ourselves to deliberate, O oh Father God, and to discuss, O oh God, the business of this great county, we ask your divine presence with us. We invoke, O oh God, this divine presence among us. Endow us now with knowledge and wisdom as we discuss and to deliberate. Bless each commissioner, God, for every representative that is here and for all that is assembled. We give you glory in all we do. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Okay, at this time, we will uh, proceed to our public comment period, and uh, I'll open the public comment period. I'll ask the uh, county manager to read the rules for uh, our comment period, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, the public comment period shall um, last no longer than 15 minutes. Time may be extended at the discretion of the board. Each speaker will have a maximum of three minutes to make remarks until the 15-minute time limit is attained. No time may be yielded to a speaker by another speaker. Speakers will address the board from the lectern and begin their remarks by stating their name and their address. Speakers shall not discuss matters deemed to be closed session items such as personnel matters, litigation, attorney client, and also any matters which are subject of public hearings already on this agenda. Thank you. Okay. Speakers? We have three speakers. Our first speaker is Jesse Garner. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, distinguished Council, uh, Commissioners, excuse me. Um, Jesse Garner, Pastor of Open Arms Community Church, 3361 Vaudelin Avenue. I myself, I myself am a formerly incarcerated individual. I received a sentence of life plus six years. After serving 18 years, nine months and 27 days, I was released on parole and returned to my home in Cumberland County in December of 1999. When I was released, I had great family support and a skill to assist me in reintegrating myself back into my community. The, many of those returning citizens don't have this support. The state of North Carolina releases 23,000 uh, plus returning citizens in various communities around North Carolina annually. Uh, last year, 2015, Cumberland County was a recipient of 800 plus of those recipients. In April of 2016, 88 returning citizens were released back into Cumberland County. Those of us in this room that work with that population uh, got together, uh, sensing that the need was more timely than ever, got together of January of 2015 to see that we could find a way that where we could productively and uh, effectively help those returning citizens coming back into our community. With guidelines from the Department of Public Safety we assembled together all of the stakeholders that was necessary to help us in this endeavor at the Kiwanis Club in March of 2015. Out of that assembly was formed the Fayetteville Cumberland County Reentry Council. Since the forming of the council, we have met monthly, attended conferences, and attended meetings, training sessions to find ways that we could educate ourselves to uh, use best practices to help those coming back into our community. Uh, the Cumberland County Reentry Council, the mission of the Reentry Council is to strengthen, support, encourage, and empower both formerly incarcerated individuals and uh, returning citizens back into our community through a comprehensive network of service providers that would assist these individuals uh, with the barriers they face coming back into our community. Uh, the Cumberland County Reentry Council will uh, offer supportive services such as housing, transportation, education, employment, life skills, family support, uh, and uh, education. Wow, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Um, it has been reported that two-thirds of the individuals that are, are released after a three-year period are rearrested within a three-year period of their release and and over one half are incarcerated. 
Sir, I'm going, to, I'm going to extend your time because I see a lot of interest on this board and what you say. Thank you so, so very much, sir. And forgive me for stuttering, please. I understand. All right. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Supporting reentry will strengthen our communities uh, by reducing crime and homelessness and producing law abiding and productive law abiding for taxpaying citizens. You have identified on your strategic plan reducing crime, crime reduction, and homelessness as some of your major priorities. If you truly believe in the redemptive quality of human nature, then reentry must be in the conversation. Thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Anna Elliott. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Anna Elliott. I reside at 1256 Shipney Swift Drive, Fayville, North Carolina, 28306. I am a proud mother of three wonderful boys and one adorable girl. In January 2014, my princess was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. She was only two and a half years old. My, my husband and I did not know how to react to the challenge we were given. We didn't know what to do, what to ask, and we really didn't realize what a life-changing reality we were going to be facing. Our princess became insulin dependent. We will always be grateful to the doctors and nurses that God has put on our path to learn how to manage this unpredictable illness. We have come a long way, and our princess had teach us how to be brave and courageous on this journey. However, she's still a child, and I will always be her advocate. The time has come for my daughter to start kindergarten. She's more excited than anyone in the family, but I am concerned. I'm concerned because I have learned that the state of North Carolina doesn't have a permanent nurse in school. I wonder why. What happened for this to take place? Nurses are essential on a day-to-day -day basis in school to identify and treat accidents and injuries. Students with chronic illness, such as asthma, diabetes, seizures, etc., It will help to minimize absenteeism from these students. It will help prevent and control the spread of transmissible disease. Bottom line is, a school nurse is needed because she or he will know how to respond in case of an emergency. Last week, I presented this concern at the school board meeting, and we were very excited to know that we have earned a blessing from ex-Commissioner King on the matter. He want to make sure that I mention his name tonight. <laughs> Just a little recap of my concern to you. My name is Anna Elliott. I am a mother of a type 1 diabetic child that needs to have a peace of mind of my child being safe while in school, earning an education. I am a child advocate, and I won't stop until it takes place. Have a great evening. Our final speaker is Isabel Areola. Good evening. My name is Isabel Areola. I'm 13 years old and I have type 1 diabetes. I was diagnosed when I was in second grade. And it was the scariest thing to me. And I was always taken care of by a nurse there. And I was always told that to, if anything happens, to always go to the nurse. But now, there's not a permanent nurse. I understand that the budget may be low, but I stand here in front of you seeing you all have brand new iPads. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And I recently had an in incident at my school. And I almost, well, I almost died. And the school nurse was not present to help me. And the ADA plan was not in use, I guess I can say. No one knew what to do. No one knew what to say. And I was scared for my life. I couldn't respond. I couldn't say anything. And knowing that a nurse would be in that school 
would give me such peace of mind. Because now I'm afraid to go to school. Because I'm afraid that the same incident might happen or something might happen. And I might die next time. And it's a scary thing for any diabetic or any person with any chronic disease or anything that happens to them. Because they need to know, they need to have a peace of mind to know that someone will be there to take care of them. My mom and my dad, they were scared for me. And when they sent me to school, they have in their mind that I'm going to be safe. I didn't feel safe that day. And, well, I don't know what else I can say to you because all I can say is please, more school nurses in the schools. I have friends with sickle cell who miss school constantly. And they tell me that a school nurse would be good for them. I don't know why, but they just tell me that a school nurse would help them in so many ways. And I have more friends across the county who they almost have the same incidents as me, and they tell me constantly that they wish there was a school nurse there for them. Because like I said before, it's a scary moment for us. Because all you feel in your mind, it's like you're in a deep sleep, and you don't know if you'll ever wake up from that. And yeah, so please, more school nurses. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> There are no further speakers. Close the uh, public comment period at this time. Uh, Ms. Cannon? Approval of the um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, could we go back to the recognition oh. of the Citizens Academy graduates? They always put those things after the comment period. My bad. Okay. Uh, yes, let's recognize the Citizens Academy. Graduates listed on separate sheet. Where's my separate sheet? Okay. If, if you are a graduate of our most recent Citizens Academy, if you're present tonight and when I call your name, will you please stand and be recognized? And then, at, then after we do that, will you come, come up here one more time and uh, shake our hands and get your picture taken? Will you do that for me? Okay, first graduate is Curtis Brown. Curtis, thank you. You don't have to remain standing if you don't want to. Linda E. Bryant. C. Wayne Collier. Carolyn Collier. Betty Davis. Ted Donovan, Charles Fuller, Monica Fuller, Victor Glover, Kay Harris, Ambrose Jacobs, I'm sorry, I missed Monica Fuller. I, admit, I failed to say that she's a county employee. We recognize our county employees, I say. Monica, wave, wave your hand one more time. Just wait, thank you. Okay, uh, Sue Johnson, also a county employee. Darryl, excuse me, Daryl Johnson. <coughs> Gabby Keenitz. did I pronounce that right? Okay, she's not here, so I'm not gonna embarrass her. Jackie Kubinski. Daphne Little. Thank you, Daphne. Also a county employee. Jean MacArthur. Montreal McDonald. Marion McLean. Daniel Middleton. Karen Moore, Sandra Napier, Devin Newton, 
Adam New Noriega, Laverne Oxendine. There's Laverne. Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> Georgia <laughs> Georgia Pay. Marty Sierra Donovan. Marty also a county employee. Ebony Smith. James Stubbs. Okay. Joanne Tackett. Mary Taylor. Tony Terry. Jenny Ware. Jenny. Randolph Washington. And Samaria Zavala. Okay, if I called your name, would you come please and just let us shake your hand one more time? Just find, just find a spot down here in front of us. We're gonna, we're gonna embarrass you one more time with the camera. I'm sorry, Jane. Mary, please. I miss you. I'm so sorry. Karen Moore, former county employee. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your hard work. Congratulations, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you again for your Thank you for your Congratulations. Yeah, you'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> She's going to run away. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this time Ms. Cannon will proceed with approval of the agenda. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I do have one slight modification, please. It's item 3A. It is a contested zoning case moving to uncontested. It's case P16-18. Will it move up on the agenda? Or yes, just, sir. If okay. we if we could, Mr. Chairman, if we could move it under um, 3C and consider it with the uncontested cases. <coughs> no, I, it is uncontested. It's, on the, it's it under contested. P16-18.